Hey guys, welcome back to The Compound. Today we'll be jumping in the time machine and going back to the year 1993 for today's retro repaint. Now I have covered the Red Rex before on this channel, but I primarily used the airbrush on it and it turned out okay, but as things go, the more you do stuff, the more you progress and you become better at it. So I feel like I can do the Red Rex again and do an even better job at it and also kind of give you guys um, the tools to do it in case you don't have an airbrush you can do all this by hand so that's what we're going to do today i'm going to show you guys how to do it no airbrush required uh, it will make things easier but you don't have to have one and we're just going to be using basic craft paints no expensive crazy stuff here I was inspired to revisit this repaint when I sat down to build my juvenile Rex figure from Rod's Random Work. And um, I was going to do a video on this guy, but since it's a very limited run kind of uh, product and not everybody was able to get one or has access to it. So instead, I'm going to show you guys how to do the Red Rex deco on the juvenile Rex from the Lost World. This one is pretty easy to come by on eBay. It's really not that expensive, especially loose. And um, I feel like it would be a great stand-in as the Juvenile Rex from the Jurassic Park novel. Since in the novel, it's described as being the same color as the adult Rex, sort of like a um, reddish-brown color. So I figured it's only fitting that this one matches the Kenner Red Rex. But in this case, I'm actually going to be painting the Juvenile figure as well as one of the Mattel T-Rexes to go along with it. So to help you guys out even further, I've already sat down and mixed paints together to help give you guys a head start on the colors you'll need for this deco. For the skin tone, you'll need to mix two colors together, and that's barn red and chestnut. And you want to get a nice light reddish brown tone, similar to um, the Vallejo Model Air German Red Brown. Uh, just a nice uh, reddish brown mixture will work great. You don't want it to be too dark, but you don't want it to be too light. So this is a nice little happy medium, and you'll want to just play around with the ratio until you get it just right. For the green underside, you'll want to grab some crisp green and golden sunset to get sort of a similar color to the Kenner underbelly. Now for the patterns on the back, this time I wanted to avoid using black, which is I think that's what I used the first time I did the Red Rex repaint. So instead I got some pavement, which is a dark gray, and I mixed in some burnt umber and some English ivy green, surprisingly, and I mixed it all up probably about 50 to 50 to 25% English Ivy Green, sort of the ratio of it, uh, to get a similar tone. And I was actually testing it out on one of the stripes on this Rex that I have. It's in sort of bad condition. So I was testing the paint out on the stripes and it's the closest that I could get to the colors on the Kenner Red Rex. Now, obviously, the brand of paint is optional. You may not even have access to this particular brand uh, that I have here in the U.S., but um, this will at least give you an idea of the colors that you'll need, and hopefully um, it'll send you on your way to get the right color palette that you'll need to achieve the Red Rex Deco. So the first color to go down is the reddish brown. Now, I get asked this all the time if you can use these Apple Barrel acrylic paints in an airbrush, and the answer is yes. Um, but you have to thin them down significantly since they are super thick. Uh, so you can see here, I'm just adding the paint straight into my airbrush and then thinning it down with water to get sort of a milk-like consistency. Um, if you're doing this by hand, just apply several thin coats of the red brown until you get a nice smooth base. And applying it thin will give you a nice finish, but also cut down on the chalkiness and it won't clog up the sculpt. This craft paint is very thick and it will clog up details if you're not careful and you just slap it on like crazy. So always thin down the craft paints even if you're going to paint by hand. So with the base color done, now I'm going to move on and knock out all the dark patterns. And the design part is purely up to personal taste, so feel encouraged to be creative here. Uh, I like to make up my own design because honestly the ones on the Kenner Red Rex are really just applied so haphazardly and they don't have a very aesthetically pleasing look. So I recommend just making up your own design here or take some screenshots of mine to use as reference. This really comes down to using that rule of cool, guys. 
So I've got the dark gray paint in my wet palette and it is thinned down and um, I'm actually going to cover how to make your own wet palette um, in a video coming up so stay tuned for that. It will uh, change your painting game. You'll wonder how did I ever paint before the wet palette but it's a really awesome tool to add to your arsenal and I'll show you guys how I made mine um, and I think you can buy pre-made ones probably I don't know but this is we're gonna do stuff on the cheap here uh, the wet palette is amazing so we'll cover that uh, in a future video but for now we're gonna go in with and I'm gonna swap back and forth between different sized brushes um, big thick brushes and uh, fine tip brushes depending on you know what the design needs so I'm just going back and forth adding different size dots and splotches and you know different patterns and stuff like that just trying to make it look interesting while also keeping the spirit of the Kenner Red Rex now with all the patterns done I'm gonna jump in and knock out that underbelly color and again the paint is thinned down with water to help with the flow and I'll just start to uh, carefully lay down a thin layer of this green. Uh, since the it's this is a light color going over a dark color, this will require several coats to get an even smooth finish. Uh, so just be patient and apply very thin coats and then dry it with a hair dryer in between coats if you need to to speed up that paint time. Uh, you just want to follow the natural curves of the sculpt and then taper it off as you get to the tip of the tail. The easiest thing to do would be to apply this green with an airbrush. That way you get that really cool factory fade. Uh, but since we're doing this by hand, we'll just end up with sharp, clean lines, which isn't bad. It gives the figure a very toyetic factory appearance. Now with the green all done, we'll move in and hit all of the finer details. So I'm going to paint the mouth with my flesh tone mix, which is just a scarlet red mixed with beige. And then I'll carefully try and pick out the individual teeth uh, with an off white. I'll paint the eye with a yellow ochre and um, add a big black pupil to give it that sort of adorable puppy look. And then uh, we'll finish it off with a little tiny white light catch. I'll paint the claws on the hands and feet with a matte black and then seal him up with some Liquitex matte varnish. Uh, this stuff is the best. Uh, it's a bit pricey. It's about $15 a bottle, uh, but it's totally worth the money and it can be applied uh, with the airbrush or just straight out of the bottle with a hand brush. Um, if you don't have this particular varnish, Mod Podge Thin Down will also work to seal on the paint. Just apply uh, a very, very thin coat of the Mod Podge because even though it does dry clear, it can clog up the details sometimes. So the Juvenile Rex is done, but I am not done. So now I have to do this all over again and repeat the same exact process just on a bigger T-Rex figure. So I'm going to be using the Stomp and Strike uh, for this since it's actually a pretty massive T-Rex and it has some great sculpt details and very little articulation. So the risk of paint rub is very minimum, but you know, use whatever T-Rex that you have access to. And just to make my life a little bit easier and for the sake of time, I am going to paint this big T-Rex with the airbrush, but the process would be the same exact process as uh, painting the smaller T-Rex. You would just do this by hand if you don't have an airbrush, but I am using the same exact paints that I used um, on the smaller T-Rex that I'm using on this one. Just thin down and shot through my airbrush. I'll then paint all the dark deco by hand, just like I did on the juvenile. Um, as well as all the little details. The only thing that I won't be painting are the teeth uh, and the inside of the mouth. Uh, they just look fine the way they are and I was able to get around those without getting um, too much overspray on them. So after all that, I am finally finished and uh, here are the two Rexes side by side looking awesome and I've learned something with doing this video that it can be extremely mind numbing doing the same deco twice in a row and I did these all in one day uh, while filming. And I'll tell you, at the end of the eight hours I spent painting and filming, I was absolutely sick and tired of, of looking at the Red Rex. So, uh, so there you go, a little behind the scenes um, of the madness that is the Jurassic Park compound painting room. Uh, but, you know, it's good practice, and uh, the results are totally worth it in the end, and I'm really pleased with how these two turned out. So I appreciate you guys sticking around and hanging out with me and watching. I hope you've all been inspired to get out there and uh, maybe paint yourself a pair of uh, novel Rexes, if that's your thing, of course. Um, if you've already done a Rex and you want it featured over on Instagram, be sure to tag me at the Jurassic Park Compound in the photo so I can share it in my story. In the meantime, for more Jurassic-related content, you know where to find me. Links will be in the description box below. You guys take care, and I'll see you around the compound.